for the second straight week. The Saints lay an egg. Coming up, all the painful highlights from the Falcons pounding of the Saints. We'll take you outside the dome for a massive pre-game party. We'll go one-on-one -on -one with veteran Jim Wilkes as he talks about his new role. And stripping the ball, it's become a Saints trademark. Ladies and gentlemen, Elvis has left the building, but fear not. Saints sideline is next. This is Saints sideline. Hello, and thanks for joining us on Saints Sideline. I'm Ed Daniels. I'm Alexander Lalonde. And you know, it's now two clunkers in a row for the Saints. This one wasn't as bad a loss as the one at Pittsburgh, but again, a loss is a loss. Now the Saints' lead is now down uh, to one game in the West. I, I understand that reasoning, but if I can disagree with you just a little, I, I, I know the Steeler game was ugly, but to get hammered by a, a, a very a, a bad Atlanta football team at home uh, can't make you feel too good about it, you know? <laughs> but the Saints will try to get back on the winning track against the Phoenix Cardinals in Phoenix next week. Bobby Hebert was back. He was loudly booed as he came onto the playing field Sunday, but Hebert quickly quieted the sold-out Superdome crowd, leading the Falcons to a convincing 26-15 win. Bobby Hebert may be the best relief pitcher in Atlanta. Coming off the bench when James Williams and Vaughn Johnson sent starter Billy Joe Tolliver out in the first quarter with a separated shoulder. Hebert then threw his fourth and fifth TD passes against his old mates. Atlanta got 132 yards rushing from Eric Pegram. Deion Sanders led a defense that challenged Saints receivers and hurried Wade Wilson. I have to be accountable for my, for my part, you know, but uh, you know, I don't think the Saints as a team are playing that, playing that great, but certainly the, the quarterback play, my play has, uh, you know, got to be improved. Trailing 17-6 in the third, Vaughn Johnson denied Pegram and forced the Falcons to get three. The Saints went 76 yards and three plays, Wilson going the last 23 to Quinn Early. Here, the Saints, who won the first five, would shut down Atlanta and force a punt. But the Falcons drove for three more to put out the fire and raise the ire of Ricky Jackson. Well, we're in the league for to be a big boy. You don't lose no game like this. I mean, I don't see how these guys go out here and go sleep tonight. I think everybody should stay up all night and wait to practice tomorrow. What's wrong with it? I mean, it's just terrible. I mean, you can't lose to a team like this. And we're a better team than that. We're supposed to be in the Cowboys and all those guys leave. So, I mean, you don't let no team like this beat you. Here's the Saints' bitter pill was Bobby Hebert's sweet homecoming. 13 of 16, 169 yards, all with a sore elbow and a hot dog step or two that must come from just being around Jerry Glanville. The only unhappy Hebert was T-Bob. T-Bob, here's your ball. Can you take ball? T-Bob, come, come on, come with Daddy. You can come. The little guy was in no mood to party, but Dad, they say le bon temps roule. You know, I'm not naive to know that, you know, they're not going to cheer. I mean, I'm like, probably, how can I put this in words, um, you know, like the Benedict Arnold of New Orleans or something. <laughs> Needless to say, Atlanta sports writers were very impressed with Abra's performance. Here's what they're saying. Len Pasquarelli of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution writes, with a second straight brilliant performance against his one-time teammates, Aber totally undressed a once fierce New Orleans defense. With Aber leading the way, the Falcons turned the Saints' normally rollicking playground into a confessional. Suddenly owners of a modest yet meaningful two-game winning streak, the Falcons moved a step closer to respectability with a dominating performance on both sides of the ball. And the Saints are once again threatening to make this town the big queasy as upset fans who have seen this all before begin to ponder the possibility of yet another chichoke. The Falcons win Sunday may keep the Bob and Jerry show intact in Atlanta. Head coach Jerry Granville has spent the first half of the 1993 season treading on thin ice. And and Beating the Saints definitely helped Glanville's cause. But his team is still 2-5 and five on the year. There's weekly speculation in Atlanta on whether or not Jerry will be canned. 
but those close to the organization expect him to be around at least until the end of this season. High expectations for this football team, and I'm, I'm going to dance on it a little bit, but, but I think this is a football team that, that they expected to be in the playoffs. I've heard them say that in the past. I think they'll stand on that. If they don't get in the playoffs, and if the record is not what they, they wanted, then uh, I think they'll make their evaluations off that. Next, stripping the ball. The Saints didn't do it Sunday, but they've been very good at it so far this year. We'll tell you why. And we'll take you outside the dome for all the pre-game pageantry, including the Wienermobile. That's next on Saints Sideline. were the key to the Saints 5-0 start. If the Saints club is going to get off the current schneid, they'll have to get back to forcing mistakes. A lion's share of the opponent's miscues were caused by an aggressive move that the Saints work diligently on. Week 2, the Saints and Falcons tied at 31. Ronaldo Turnbull gets by Mike Ken, strips the ball for Bobby Hebert. Three plays later, Morton Anderson kicks the game-winning field goal. Week 1, Oilers lead 7-0 and driving for more. Ricky Jackson strips Ernest Givens. Rick from behind knocked the ball out, we recovered it, ran it back in our area, and I believe we kicked the field goal. So, you know, all of a sudden we're looking at a possible 14-0, and it's now 7-3, and momentum changed a little bit, and it was a real big play at that time, and right, a big play in the season up to this point. Huge plays indeed, and it starts from preparation in the meeting rooms, much more than anything taught on the field. You have to show them on the film where the opportunities are there to get the ball out. You know, you can slow it down, freeze the frame, and really show them where the ball, when and where the ball can be knocked out. And when it can't be, and you're better off making the tackle. Against the Rams, the Lions. The Saints made plays like this one, a reason for their 5-0 start. And it all started with a little preparation and know-how, the art of the strip. At every Saints home game, the party gets started long before kickoff. The place to be is on the entrance ramp connecting the Superdome to the New Orleans Center. As photographer Bill Evans shows us, it is definitely a buyer's market. Well, we're about 25 minutes away from kickoff. We told our wives we were going on a religious retreat. <laughs> and we ended up here in New Orleans and it's been everything but that. Yeah, and uh, can, can we say an amen on that? Come on, wrestling. Come on, wrestling. Grudge Come on. match. Grudge match. Oh, no, no, no. came here quarter nine to get our parking spot then we leave we go get church after church we have a couple of brews and now we're ready we're here for the big saints and atlanta falcons game and we're here um promoting the great wienermobile there you go different round trip tickets anywhere south We're the New Orleans International Airport Rotary Club. Folks, we're raising money and food. Put your dollar right here. We're sending out 100% of all the money and all the food right here to the Midwest flood victims. Thank you. Uh, I'm in. Thank you. Got some? Glanville gave me my tickets today. Elvis will be there for sure in the third quarter. Between the third and fourth quarter, Elvis will be there. Compliments of Glanville. Coming up next, he's not Elvis, but we'll go one-on-one -on -one with veteran Jim Wilkes as he takes on his new role as a coach of sorts. That's next on Saints Sideline. injury has forced defensive tackle Jim Wilkes to remain on the Saints' sideline so far this season. But he hasn't been just a casual bystander. Wilkes has begun working on his next career by serving as sort of a coach for the younger players. 
the experience he has amassed on the field has made Jim Wilkes a valuable asset off the field, giving his fellow teammates a hands-on perspective. I think the guys kind of look up to me a little bit more because I've been in the league for a while. I've played against, you know, all the teams in the league. I've, you know, Frank Warren's been out there also. They look up to him too, Ricky Jackson. So, uh, you know, it's just a, an, an extra coach on the field right now for the guys, and I think it's been helpful to them. I've never played professional defensive line in the National Football League. Jimmy's played 11, 12 years. So I can give them my view and the focus of what's going on, and Jimmy can give them a real pragmatic, this is exactly what's happening to you out there, and that's what Coach Pease means by that, and this is why we have to do this. What do they come to you with? What do they ask you? What do they say to you? Well, on the way out, out to the field, they'll ask me to keep an eye on them, you know, see what blocks they're getting, and, uh, you know, just different runs, what kind of what kind of blocks the offensive lines are trying to set up on them. And uh, that's pretty much what I'll, I'll sit back and try and try and uh, formulate for them when they come to the sideline and let them know what's going on. In the midst of his team's support, Jim continues to rehab. He tore the triceps tendon in his arm in the preseason game against Detroit. How's the arm? The arm's getting better, you know, it's a slow process. It's boring as hell, you know, sitting on the sideline, not suited up for the games, you know, something I'm not used to. I'm not uh, quite ready to be a coach yet, but I've been relegated to that position right now. Do you ever think about coaching? I thought about it. I thought about it, you know, at a, at a high school level, you know, when, uh, when uh, the players are still innocent, you know, when playing is still fun. It's not just, for, you know, not just for the money, you mm -hmm. know. People are playing for pride there in high school. I, I thought about it that level, yeah. What kind of a coach would you be? I don't know. That's hard to say. You know, I'm not a real boisterous type guy. I'm not a loud, rah-rah type of guy. I'm a, you know, quiet guy. So, uh, you know, I'd have to have a good uh, hell of a uh, assistant staff behind me to do all the yelling and screaming and all, because I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'll be a compassionate coach, I'm sure. The Saints could use Jim Wilkes back in the lineup to help stuff the run. As Doug Mouton shows us, it's an area in which the Saints could use lots of improvement. It's a distressing sight. Another running back slicing his way through the Saints defense. Eric Pegram ran for 132 yards, even though the Falcons didn't show the Saints a lot of variety. I don't, I don't think we call it, but maybe three or four different uh, running plays the whole game. The Saints' run defense, a strength of the team for years, has been woefully bad lately. I was asked that a lot, you know, you know during, during the week, and they were saying, well, how, how do you feel about everybody getting all the yards from the Saints? I said, well, that just hold, I just, well, I was just hoping that they let one more week slip in there, you know. were both in losing causes. The last two have hurt. Steelers back up Leroy Thompson's 101 yards and Pegram's 132. Well, I think they missed Sam Mills for one. You know, as far as stuffing and run, you know, run support. And, uh, unfortunately, he wasn't there for them, but fortunately, he wasn't there, you know, and I wish him well, you know, get back in the lineup. The sooner the better for an area that could use a lot of improvement. I'm Doug Mouton for St. Sideline. You for Jordan will join us next to talk about the Saints' inability to stop the run. And he'll offer his insights into just what's wrong. That's next on Saint Sideline. After a brilliant five-game stretch to start the season, Saints quarterback Wade Wilson has come back down to earth the past two weeks. He's finding out the honeymoon is over. After throwing one interception in the first five games, Wade Wilson threw five in the last two. Wilson accepts his share of the blame, but he has company. The offensive line isn't opening holes for the run, and the receivers are getting challenged at the line of scrimmage. 
He didn't play bad today. You know, I don't know if he played his best in Pittsburgh, but uh, the team got to, guys got to step up also. You know, their defense, our offense pretty much did what they wanted to do today also. You know, I would put all the blame on Wade. Wade is a, is a heck of a quarterback, and I'm sorry we lost him. Today, they were definitely pressing Dion on one side, and I felt like that he could cover man-to-man, -man, and then they would put the free safety with help on the, on the other receivers, you know, with, who uh, had man-to-man, -man, but probably not quite as good a cover guys, but so they were getting safety help, but yes, they're starting to press our receivers a little bit. Falcons looked at the Steeler game plan for the Saints and made that plan obviously work for them. Wade Wilson and the Saints will now try to turn it around in Phoenix. Can they get it done? For some answers, we go on the bench with Buford Jordan. Buford, two straight disappointing losses. Uh, is this a trend? Is this a serious problem? What is it? I think it's just um, bringing the Saints back down. You know, they haven't played real good ball over the past couple of weeks, and, you know, they got beat. And um, the other team just played better than them. Buford, for a team that relies on the defense to make all its plays and set everything else up, when the defense can't stop the run, it's... Right? Yeah, it is, because, um, you know, that's been always been the strong point of the Saints is their defense. And right now, this um, defense hasn't played up to it, you know, their expectations. So it has caused some problems for them. What about injuries? Uh, Sam Mills has been out of the last uh, a few weeks. Uh, how bad is that th affecting the Saints? Um, I think it's affecting the Saints because that guy, Sam's like a coach out on the field, you know, and he puts everybody in the right place. Don't take nothing away from James Williams. He's been playing great, you know, and so have the other backups. But the um, thing is, is those starters are being missed at this point. How difficult will it be for the Saints to turn this thing around, especially after two losses in a row? Um, I don't think it's that, that difficult. You know, you just, like I said, you have to go back and look at films and see what you've been what doing wrong and, you know, try to get things, you know, corrected. The biggest thing when you're having things like this is a lot of errors, blown assignments and stuff, and you have to cut down on that. And I think Phoenix is a good team to do this with. You know, it's cut down your mistakes and get back into the winning. Will they win this one? I think they will. You know, the thing is, is like I said all along, they have to get the running game going, and for them to be successful, the running game has to be productive this week. Well, they helped uh, Jerry Glanville this week. Let's hope they don't help Joe Bugle <laughs> <laughs> in Phoenix. Okay, We're man. not done. Thanks, Buf. <laughs> Let's hope they don't help Joe. Joe, uh, you're on your own. Up next, we'll preview this week's Cardinal game. We'll get to that and a lot more on Saints Sideline. <laughs> DMI New Orleans. The Saints will try to get better under the Arizona sun this weekend as they travel to Phoenix to play the Cardinals. The 49ers were at home against the Cardinals Sunday, and of course they came away with the win. Coach Joe Bugle is in the soup in Phoenix, hot soup, and he's just about cooked. Needs to win nine games to keep his job. It won't happen. Didn't get it Sunday. Steve Young here fights off the pressure, finds Jerry Rice for the first down. It set up a touchdown. 7-0 Niners. San Francisco played some D. Steve Berline's pass picked off by Merton Hanks. The Niners had three INTs on the day. Four plays later. Young to Rice. Touchdown 14-0. Niners never look back. They go on to beat the Cardinals 28-14. So far this season, the Cardinals have played great against the Redskins and very poorly against everyone else, so that bodes well for Sunday. Plus, the Saints haven't been too shabby against Phoenix so far this decade. Second and five, they're going with the hot hand. Ruben May for the five. Touchdown, Saints! The Saints have had a great deal of success against Phoenix the past few years. Back in 1990, Ruben Mays ran for three touchdowns in a Saints route. In 91, Gene Atkins had a career day. Atkins picked off three passes. The Saints got seven turnovers in all on their way to a second straight blowout. Last year, though, the Cardinals put up a fight. This Chris Chandler to Ernie Jones hookup gave Phoenix a 14-10 halftime lead. But in the second half, the Saints roared back with 28 straight points to win it, 30-21. The Saints and the Cardinals have played three times in the 90s. The Saints are 3-0, having won the three games by a combined score of 85-31. to After the Cardinals game, the Saints will get their second week off of the year. They really need to get this thing turned around. I think this week is the week they're going to do it. They're definitely going to come back with a W. I, we said that last week. I, you know, <laughs> if, if they lose to the Phoenix Cardinals, I mean, <laughs> geez, geez them. <laughs> 
I don't know. You can come back by yourself next week, okay? Okay. Yeah. The Saints will be back home against the Green Bay Packers on November 14th. Hopefully Sam Mills will be back. His return will give the defense a big boost. Kickoff time from Sun Devil Stadium in Phoenix is 3 o'clock on Sunday. And of course, kickoff time remains the same for Friday night football. Join JT Curtis and me for the area's most complete coverage of prep football week 9. Friday night at 10.30 right here on WGNO 26. Hopefully I'll be with you next week. <laughs> Good night. I'm Ed Daniels. I'm Alexander Laurent. We'll both see you next week on Saints Sideline. We just didn't play well enough to win, in my opinion, as a football team. I, I don't know if you can, you know, pinpoint any one particular area. I think it was just a, a, a combination of things uh, in, in any of the phases of the, of the team, offense, defense, or the kicking. We just, we just didn't play well enough. We made a lot of mistakes, and uh, more than Atlanta made, and uh, uh, they beat us. Tell me a little bit about the dance you were doing. Tell me a little bit about that dance. What the, the dance you were doing in the back there? Oh, that was just playing music and I was feeling good. So, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't nothing I had planned to do. It was just, just going on kicking. Yeah, it was just going on kicking, having a good time. Does he enjoy it? He did a great job, but you know how he wants to compete, especially here. And a great win for him. The team asked me to give him the game ball. Uh, we already, and then the team asked for two game balls, one, one for him and one for Billy Joe for getting hurt. They said that really helped. <laughs>